It's a new week and a new retro gaming handheld from Ambernick. It's the SNES controller styled RG353P. We will unbox it, check out the features and try a bunch of emulators and games. Some of which have been suggested by our followers on social media. Keep an eye out to see if we pitch your game suggestion. As always we start with the unboxing. Something different to this model is a new brand of packaging which looks more professional than the plain white packaging we have seen in the past models. It's a nice touch. Lifting the lid up we get straight to the RG353P handheld itself. We will show it in more detail in a moment. Under the packaging is a newly designed user guide which is in full English on one side. It's got everything you need to know how to use the handheld. Next we have a USB Type-C charge cable. We recommend using this one and it plugs into the USB port on the right side of the handheld. There is a 64 gigs micro SD card which is used for your game storage. And last but not least we have a screen protector and some wipes for when applying it. The RG353P comes in two colours based on the Japanese and European and North American colours. Let us know which theme is your favourite in the comments. It measures around 6.8 by 3.1 by 0.7 inches and weighs 209 grams. The display is a 3.5 inch IPS touchscreen with a 640 by 480 resolution which is perfect for retro gaming. On the front you have your standard D-pad, dual analog sticks and gaming buttons. There are two small buttons on either side of the screen. The left is the function button and the right is the power button. Along the top we have left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There is a USB Type-C port to connect peripherals to and a reset button. In the middle is a mini HDMI port for connecting to your TV or monitor which we will show shortly. There is a volume rocker and a second USB Type-C port which you use for charging. On the bottom are two micro SD card slots. The left one is for the Lydex operating system. The right side is where you put in your 64 gigs card for storage. And finally in the middle is a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the back are two circular grip pads which you can use with your fingers for a firmer grip. The RG353P uses the RK3566 quad-core processor that we first saw in the RG503 handheld. It has 2 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM, which is a little low but fine for retro gaming. There's 32 gigs of fast internal eMMC storage for Android and 16 gigs on the micro SD card for Linux. For communication, there is a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. This can be used for game data scraping, multiplayer games or going online with Android apps. And powering it all is a 3500 mAh battery. The battery will last up to 6 hours depending on what emulator and games you are playing. Linux is using an emulation style frontend for the main navigation. You can use left and right to browse the available gaming systems. Included on there are Final Burn, MAME, Vertical Arcade Games, Wonder Swan Color, Capcom Play System 1, 2 and 3, MSX, PC Engine, Master System, Mega Drive, Game Gear, Dreamcast and PSP. After choosing the system it brings up a list of games on the storage card along with a thumbnail image and some game information. Pick a game and it will start it up. From the main menu you have plenty of options that you can configure. You can connect to the Wi-Fi for game data scraping if you add any new games and also play multiplayer on compatible emulators. You can also safely shut down the system from here which we recommend doing. The Android operating system gives you a bit more freedom in what you can do but that does come at the cost of setting everything up. There are a number of emulators pre-installed including the PlayStation 2 emulator, Ether SX2, Dolphin, PlayStation emulator Duck Station, Final Burn Neo, Mupin 64 Plus, Mega Drive emulator and the Saturn emulator Yabashan Shiro. You also have RetroArch from which you can download dozens of different emulators ranging from Amstrad, Commodore and Fairchild ranging up to the PSP era. Not everything will work 100% but it's a great place to start when trying different classic consoles and computers. 
It is worth noting that the Google Play Store app is not installed. You may be able to get it installed, but we did not try it. Or install the Aurora Store, which is like a Play Store alternative and works great. The link is in the description. Both Android and Linux OS support output to your TV or monitor. For Android, you simply connect a mini HDMI cable and it will automatically display. On Linux, you will need to connect the HDMI whilst it is switched off and then boot to Linux for it to display. The quality on both OS are perfectly fine. We had no issues using either, although we did prefer being able to switch on to Android without having to reboot. A quick system benchmark with Geekbench, which performs a series of tests across single and multi-core operations. We got a score of 119 for single core and 359 for multi-core. In comparison, we got 952 and 2765 for the recently reviewed GPD XP Plus and 266 and 714 for the faster processor on the Ambernic RG552. These are far higher scores, but do remember both devices are also far higher cost. As we have two operating systems, going over both for each system will make for a very long video. So we will show some emulators and mention if there are any issues with either Android or Linux operating system versions. We start off with the Final Burn emulator running the arcade game Joe and Mac Returns. I found it easier getting this to run on Linux, but both operating systems will run arcade games just fine. Keeping with the arcade theme, we are playing Afterburner 2 on main. Again, there is no issue with arcade emulation, all the games we tried played great. A nice addition to the Linux OS is vertical arcade games. This is set up to play games in portrait orientation and the controls are set up for you to jump straight into the action. You can do this on Android, but you would need to set everything up yourself. Moving over to a console now and the classic Master System playing Strider. It is a fairly early console and the RG353P won't have any issues playing these games. Capcom Play System 1 and 2 work great on both operating systems and here we are playing Street Fighter 3 Third Strike on CPS3. It also runs great and we had no issues with the few games we tested. We are testing Animaniacs which was suggested by Lithium Project on Twitter. You will have no issues at all with the games on either operating system, everything works great. You can also tweak the settings for a bit of upscaling to make it look nicer. And another suggested game for us to try was Snow Brothers. We decided on the Mega Drive version and it works great as expected. Thanks to Cybernoid on Instagram for the suggestion. We entered the Splatter Ass on our PC Engine test. Like all of the other 8 and 16 bit consoles, these play perfectly. So we won't spend too much time on baseball batting monsters, as fun as it is. The much loved Neo Geo is next, and we are playing something a bit different. It is Panic Bomber, which I've never tried before, and it runs just fine, like all of the other great games on the arcade and home console system. In the first of our handheld tests, we are trying Sonic Advance 3 on the VBAM emulator. We tried a few different games on this, and all were running at full speed. They look great on this display. We tried a few different first and third party games on Nupin 64 Plus. We found many of them to be perfectly playable, but there were a few that were not quite running at full speed. You could tweak a few settings for some extra performance, but it's something to keep a note of. Dead for a 
Overall, the Dresdick emulator does a better than expected job on the RG353P. We tried a few different games and there were definitely some very playable ones. There are however more that run painfully slow than at full speed. So unless it's a fairly simple game, don't expect it to work well. We know from the RG503 handle that PlayStation emulation is far better on this processor. We tried a bunch of games, thankfully no driver this time, and they were all running fine with no slowdowns. You may get the odd frame dropped here or there, but it's nothing major. Dreamcast emulation is also much improved with this processor. You can enjoy more games if coming from an older handheld. Many games are running at full or near full speed, but you will still get a few that are running slow or have laggy audio. We got a suggestion to try Grand Theft Auto 2 on a Dreamcast, and it works great as it's a fairly basic game. Thanks to Ritz Lazy Artist on Twitter for their suggestion. and Richard on Twitter suggested Code Veronica. The intro was so long I got bored waiting, but as the intro is in real time and it seems to be running at full speed, the actual gameplay should be okay. Now on to some more demanding consoles. First we have PlayStation 2 and EFA SX2. We could not get any games running at an enjoyable speed. The processor is far too slow to perform a miracle and get something playable. The PSP is however a bit more enjoyable when it comes to playing games on the PPSSPP emulator. For Linux we get an overall slower performance so we suggest using the Android version. Games such as Tekken 6 are hovering in the mid 40s to 50s, so using Frameskip 1 will smooth things out. We were suggested by Lee Collins on Facebook to try Retro City Rampage. It runs great and you don't need to do any frame skipping. You could even increase the graphics rendering a bit to make the game look nicer. Our last emulator to test are both consoles that Dolphin supports. We start off with Burnout 2 which is an average demanding game. We are getting around the mid 30s area which is not too bad. We tried a few different games, some are very playable but there are also many that run too slow to play. We also tried the other console Dolphin supports and the games are not very playable. You may find a few basic games that run well, but overall it's not something you would buy this handle to emulate. The RG353P is a nice improvement on the previous RG503, which uses the same processor. You now have access to Linux and Android operating systems. If you just want to jump in and play, then Linux is great for this. Or, if you don't mind a bit of setting up, then Android is there for you. Personally, I prefer Linux on this handheld. Whilst it's not perfect, it's far less asshole as you just stage your games and get playing. With Android, it takes far longer to get the same results. If you are on the previous generation of handheld processor, or looking for a new one to start with, then the RG353P is a definite handheld to consider buying. We like the 5 GHz Wi-Fi for multiplayer gaming, having HDMI output to play on the TV or monitor, and the choice of Android or Linux. You can learn more about the RG353P and order yours now on our stores at droix.co.uk and droix.net. And we stock many other retro gaming handhelds and gadgets, go check us out. Thanks to everyone that suggested the game to try on the RG353P. We tried to include as many as possible. If you want to suggest games for future videos, join us on our social media channels linked in the description and keep an eye out for the next request. That wraps up this RG353P review. We hope you found it useful. 
don't forget to subscribe if you have not already it helps to grow this channel and you don't miss any of our latest videos thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next video